debate. Uh, please, the debat. The honourable member for Port Moody, Coquitlam. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank uh, the honourable member from Couch and Malahat Langford for uh, his his speech and his, uh, uh, I think, reasonable suggestions, uh, evidence points, uh, and I will uh, uh, as well. Uh, add to this uh, important motion. Uh, Madam Speaker, I rise today to support the motion by my good friend and colleague, the, the member from Victoria. Action from the government to decriminalize marijuana possession is long overdue. Certainly they must understand the hypocrisy of their current position, arresting, detaining and otherwise abridging the civil rights of Canadians for a practice they plan to make legal is unacceptable. If you ask Canadians what they think the most prominent promise made by the Liberals in the last election, ending marijuana prohibition was, would be at the top of their list. The Liberals made lofty promises to swiftly legalize cannabis so it could be controlled like alcohol. Now they claim it's more complicated than they thought, so they won't be introducing legislation until the spring of next year. The only concrete action they have taken is to appoint the member from Scarborough Southwest to look into the matter. The sensible thing to do would be to stop charging people today until we can get the re reformed regime in place. The reality is that about 60,000 Canadians will be arrested for simple possession of marijuana and 22,000 will end up with a criminal record this year alone. This lack of action will cripple many young people who will have criminal records for the rest of their lives because the Prime Minister did not respect his promise to legalize marijuana as soon as they took office. A criminal record can be a serious impediment to employment and travel opportunities that disproportionately affect youth in our communities. Maintaining the status quo is a massive waste of time, effort and energy of our entire criminal justice system. Currently, the federal government spends about $4 million a year trying simple possession cases, and that doesn't include the cost of enforcement and court resources. Police and our courts should not have to misspend resources because the government refuses to make this simple regulatory change. While we continue to wait for legislation to legalize the cultivation and sale of marijuana, the government should remove cannabis from the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. Cannabis's current legal limbo is creating unnecessary confusion in our legal system and creating disorder for municipal governments across the country, dealing with the rapid expansion of marijuana storefronts in our communities. This year, BC's chief health officer declared a public health emergency due to opioid uh, overdose deaths. This state of emergency is thanks to the rise of serious drugs like fentanyl. 308 BC residents have died of illicit drug overdoses in the first four months of 2016. That's up 75% from the 176 deaths in the same period last year. I am by no means advocating for a police-only approach to drug use, but being able to task more police to go after major drug traffickers should be our top priority. Let's get on with decriminalizing cannabis so we can free up more resources to tackle real problems facing lower mainland communities. And Madam Speaker, I will add that as a former city councillor in the city of Coquitlam, that's one thing I know we worked closely with our RCMP is to provide the tools, the resources needed to go after the real crime and offenses that were happening in our community. And I know that is not uh, a, a, a fate shared by only Coquitlam. I certainly know it happens in, in Port Moody where we have had gang violence in the past. And I know in other communities right across the country they are dealing with serious crime. This needs to be the focus of our police. Canadians know the status quo is unacceptable. 
more and more prominent Canadians and organizations are speaking out, calling on the government to take action on decriminalization now. An April report from the C.D. Howe Institute argues that pardoning Canadians convinced of, or convicted of sim simple possession, throwing out any chances charges are not charging or, or charges and not charging any more people with marijuana possession would free up substantial financial resources, which would could mitigate some of the costs of legalization. Former Liberal Prime Minister Jean Chrétien has recently said, and I'll quote, what is completely unacceptable in my judgment is a young man smoking marijuana will have a criminal record for the rest of his life, and he can't cross the border, unquote. The new Liberal government should heed his advice. Even the Conservative Party of Canada has modernized their approach to marijuana laws, calling on the government to remove possession from the criminal code. Considering the Conservatives' past inflammatory rhetoric and draconian criminal justice record, this shift is truly monumental. Madam Speaker, marijuana possession is running out of opponents, and this government is running out of excuses. In my riding of Port Moody, Coquitlam, hundreds of people have contacted my office calling for the decriminalization of marijuana. Many are confused as to what the current law is. Given the possession or the position on the government's position on legalization, for many the ambiguity leads to a false sense of security. These otherwise law-abiding citizens could find themselves convicted of a crime that could be readily prevented. Others have contacted our office to express frustration about how the lack of sensible regulation has created problems for their strata boards and for pro the proper function of local businesses. Marijuana legalization must be carefully considered and must take best practices from other jurisdictions who have already successfully implemented regulatory regimes. And of course, we can look to the south, south of the border, uh, for some of those best practices. At the same time, we cannot continue with the status quo of punishing people for a practice the government plans to make legal in the very near future. Decriminalization makes sense, saves money, and saves Canadians from further injustice. I hope the government will end their hypocrisy and support this motion before more people become victim to government inaction. Madam Speaker, I'd just like to mention that there's a, a recent poll that is uh, very indicative of where Canadians now stand. And if you look across the country, you see that uh, in a recent poll uh, done, uh, done by ECOS, that British Columbians, 73% agree with the criminalization of marijuana. 79 or 75% in Atlantic Canada agree. In Manitoba, in Ontario, Manitoba, 69% of those surveyed agreed. In Ontario, 70%. You can see the trend, Madam Speaker, that over two-thirds to three-quarters of those surveyed feel that this is a move that makes sense, it's a move that's in the right direction, and it needs to happen. Very few are opposing a, such a move. We implore the government to consider this move. That's why we put forward this Opposition Day motion. We hope that they'll consider it. We hope enough of the members on that side will consider this as a strong move in the right direction. We're not saying that this is the only thing that government needs to do. We're saying this is the right thing that they need to take action with now as they move forward on this important topic. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Yeah, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I want to thank my, my member, the member opposite for, for his remarks. And I, just a couple of things I wanted to clarify uh, with him. First of all, the government's uh, 
promise in our throne speech was to legalize, regulate, and restrict. He only sp spoke of the first third of that, which is, which is the legalization, and, and neglected, unfortunately, to talk about the importance of regulation and restriction for, and for cannabis control. Um, Madam Speaker, the, the member opposite made reference to uh, the importance of learning lessons from other jurisdictions. And, uh, in November of 2015, the Canadian Centre on Substance Abuse submitted a report on cannabis regulation, lessons learned in Colorado and Washington State, in which they said that it's, it's essential to take the time to, required to develop an effective framework for implementation to prepare for a successful launch, to develop the capacity to administer that regulatory frame, framework and to invest proactively in a public health approach to build capacity in prevention, education, and treatment. And I was just wondering if the member opposite has had the opportunity to read that important report. It, I know he values the lessons learned from other jurisdictions. Those lessons are available to him if he cares to read them. The Honourable Member for Cowichan, uh, for Port Moody, Coquitlam. Sorry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I'd like to uh, thank the Honourable Member from uh, Scarborough Southwest for his, uh, his comment and his questions. And certainly, uh, as Parliamentary Secretary, obviously he has uh, done is doing his homework on this, appreciate that. Uh, obviously, I have not read all the reports that uh, he's citing. Um, however, on the, the thrust of what he's talking about, there is, no, there is no restriction now. This is the issue. This is why what we're proposing makes sense. This is why this government has had no action in terms of this, this important topic. We've not seen the government, it's been over half of a year and we have not seen any action. We're not seeing action until the spring of next year in terms of the government proposing why, this is why it's needed to decriminalize now. Canadians are calling for it. Let's make that happen. A resuming debate at a piece of the above, the Honourable Member for Oshawa. Oh, sorry, questions and comments, questions. Questions and comments, Thank you very much, Merci. Madam, thank you very much Madam Speaker. And I do want to thank again the NDP for bringing this up because it really hi highlights the disaster that this legalization uh, uh, program that the Liberals want to bring in. But I do want to ask him a very important question because we want to, if anything that's done, it has to be done responsibly. I want to ask him about the tools that are in the toolbox today. We have these dispensaries popping up all over the place with edibles. Yeah. The Liberals put absolutely no money in for inspection. So we don't even know what these products, the marijuana that's being used to bake these, pro these edibles, if it's laced with anything like angel dust, uh, where are the profit's going to, to organize crime. And most importantly, you mentioned the Colorado experiment. Uh, the police, there's no tools in the toolbox for police to actually check for impaired driving. And they found in Colorado an increase in death and disability due to impaired driving and an increase in hospitalization of kids due to edibles. And with the NDP motion today, they're saying we need to do this immediately. They're calling on immediately decriminalization. Could he please say what he's aware of, what tools are in the toolbox today? Because I'm not aware of any tools in the toolbox that will alleviate the issues that I've just brought forward in my question. The Honourable Member for Port Moody, Coquitlam. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for his questions. I think that that's important. I know that uh, the police, the RCMP, uh, across the country do have effective tools. Uh, what we're saying right now is there needs to be action on decriminalization so that we can move forward on simple possession of marijuana. That would allow the police to put the emphasis where it's needed to tackle organized crime, to tackle the hard or illicit drugs that uh, the member references. That is where we need to put the resources. That's where we need to look at best practices, whether it's uh, from the United States or across this country. We need to be taking those best practices and putting them into place, but we need to give the resources and the tools necessary now, not wait for another year and create the kind of chaos and, and confusion that exists currently. And that's the problem. That's why this step of decriminalization is so needed and so important. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The peace of debate, resuming debate. Uh,